Welcome to Wholeness in Motion, the foundation series. And this is the 10th session. And the topic is meta patterns. So meta patterns are patterns that are like fractals. They repeat um, on all the different layers of life, levels of life. So from there might be a pattern, a way atomic particles move. There might be the way a uh, fluid moves through my arteries in a spiral. It could be the way um, learning seems to spiral around itself. So, or how the cosmos moves in spheres and elliptical shapes and so forth. It's something that repeats both structurally in the layers of the land, in the landscape on the earth, in the cosmos and in social interactions this, uh, the way there's linear work or so all kinds of layers from a social, emotional, um, physical, concrete uh, way. And um, years ago, I worked with, learned about this concept of a meta pattern and I thought of it as a shape and developed a practice and an exploration based on these simple shapes in movement and in gesture. And it, um, has been unfolding and it continues unfold into one of the um, more powerful and um, uh, key practices inside of wholeness in motion. And so in what we'll do today, I will take you through a, a version of the meta patterns practice and play. And it's so simple. It's complicated to explain, but it's very simple in the doing, like a like a haiku. As you experience it at first, it's simple, but the, there are many, many layers to it. So on the most basic level, it, we're going to play with and shapes. So there are simple shapes like layers and spheres and waves and spirals. You've been drawing them and seeing them and working with them your entire life. It's, it's actually familiar in that way. And along with each shape, which is an, another way of describing a pattern, there are, um, I'll evoke things, the, how this is seen in nature, a version of it. If we might do a line, then we might think of an oak tree or a lightning bolt connected with, with um, nature, connected with sometimes um, they're rooted or, or they're all rooted in uh, through the endocrine gland system. So I'll connect it to in, on some of them located to a gland or a location of a gland inside our body. So it's as if the shape is kind of anchored in my very tissue. Um, and you know, if that doesn't make sense to you when you're doing it, just let that part go away. Anything we do today, I'm, I'm giving you the flavor and like that ball throwing image, I'll offer you the ball, but if one is just like, okay, that I'm not familiar enough with to understand, just let that go. And you can come back and simply you could lay on the ground and imagine the words I'm saying. You could, you could probably see a lightning bolt or feel a sense of line. And that might feel different than when you hear the words of a wave crashing on the shore. So it can be an imaginary journey. You can do it just with your gesture. Um, so let's go through the meta patterns and um, you will you'll learn about it through the doing. Um, I think one last thing to orient you is you'll notice that I will um, speak of a, a kind of a perspective. It, it, they're, they're anchored to, let's say we'll do line would be clarity or relationship. So, or spiral would be things coming and going. The, the patterns are hooked up with a, a, a way of seeing the world um, operating systems, perhaps. <laughs> and if you're operating from that perspective, that way of understanding how the universe works, it's almost like principles of how the universe works, um, the, these ones are collected that it's it's hard to be in suffering and pain if you're really operating from some of these perspectives and they each have the kind of counter perspective. So if this one is line is clarity and relationship, the opposite would be fuzzy, messed up, entangled relationship. So they, they give us a tool that many people report that when they do that gesture, it brings them back into kind of a healthy, um, right relationship uh, from their own <laughs> criteria 
of how to be and feel and experience life with this this operating system going. And of course, that's all choiceful and connected to is this true for you? So I'm sharing what's been useful for my experience and for some other people's experience. And you'll figure out if that's true for you. This is an offering. And I hope it will be of some use or at least you'll get a flavor of it because it's something that makes sense over time. And then it's becomes a gem for many, many people. So enjoy. We'll start by the walk is sort of entering into the landscape of, of the meta patterns um, through the threshold. From all that description, you can let that go. And just here I am, as I am. Notice how you are, how fuzzy are you, how calm are you. In the world as it is, locate yourself on the earth and in space, I'm in this world. Supported by the planet, here comes the earth rising up underneath the air, breathing you, the water is coursing through you. The elements constructing you, supported by the planet in the flow of time. This might be your hundredth time doing the meta patterns. It might be your first. The flow of time. Awake. What would help you enjoy this, get the most out of this? But awake to, allowing it to be, to play with it, to not get it right, whatever you might want to be awake to. Bring that in and let go of what you don't. Clear the pathway. And here we are in another pattern world. <laughs> the first pattern is life force. The feeling of life force, the flow of life. Light, energy, vibration. And let that be a mystery. How do I, how do I even feel my life force? Hmm. Start that off in these patterns as a question. Or vibration, let's hum. There's all kinds of humming. There's humming of the big bang. They've recorded that hum and the hums inside of us and the hum in a sleeping puppy. So life force in this pattern, it's the flow through all the other patterns. For a moment, just do this with me. It's like from the center of the earth to the center of the sky and back again, as if there's a there's kind of energies that go up and go down, evaporation of the water, the rain coming down, blood circulating up and out the breath and back and through and down. And the second pattern, layers. And they could be vertical layers like the, you know, sandstone cliff, the walls of the Grand Canyon. Or it can be concentric circles, layers like a drop of pebble, and kind of go out in layers. Layers. Yeah. You can do that giant movement if you're in the mood to dance. You can just lay on the ground and have the tiniest movement. And this is physically rooted to our horizontal structures, our diaphragms, from the crown of the head, the roof of the mouth, the pelvic floor, thoracic. We can, we can squish our layers and open them. And layers, and that is it's about from that the potency of anything is possible in the vibration. Layers is like the stuff, it's the, it's the actual earth exists, the sun exists, the 
like the density of things. Like I am part, the perspective would be, I am part of the greater. So when I do this, it's like, I'm, I'm part, I am of the universe. And then the second pattern is fluid. I think of it rooted here in the um, sort of the, where the ovaries and, and the go, a sense of the gonads, this kind of root of your, just above the pelvic floor, where layers is all the layers of the pelvic floor is like just above the pelvic floor, like from your guts and organs. And the movement is fluid. So you can think of rivulets from a rainstorm to the rushing Mississippi watershed to the, art, the blood flowing from your heart back. The fluids, all the fluids inside you, in your cells, in the interstitial tissue around your cells. Water table. And fluid, that perspective that underlies fluid, it's like I when it come to my guts, but my own compass, that moment of creation that you exist, the sperm and the egg, and then there's you. So from all the universe, from the energy of the universe to the stuff of the universe to, to you. And so this is the perspective of being in touch with your own truth with what's true for you, that you exist and you have in you a value register. You can tell, oh, look around you right now. What's beautiful? What's kind of neutral? What do you love? What don't you want? <laughs> so this is that connecting to what's true for me before there's anyone else around, before you're editing. It's like, I love this. And from there, from our juice, from our gut feeling, from our compass, we come into line. We can make little lines like silk thread. Or light motion. Or clear still lines. Just note how different that feels in you. Just if all we did was the shapes, the difference between fluid movement fluid speaking and linear line that alone exercises our emotional range our feeling range line conceptually is about that perspective is i've got my compass but now i'm in community and you've got your compass and you've got your compass so it's about like the trajectory or the spaces between in terms of relationship. We are relational creatures. My business, your business. How can I hear your compass and you hear mine? You can, you can see the flavor of that. So line, relationship. When things are getting muddled, I guess line, or we sometimes talk about clearing the crack. And each one of these has an archetype that goes along with it. So this one is a good one. Let's do this like, like bring on your like uh, guardian, like a gargoyle or a warrior. This is like when we need to, when we're, we're we've been trained to please and not, not make any waves, but to stand up for our truth, we kind of need, sometimes need to pull on an image of an archetype. So there's a whole set of archetypes with every one of these. This is a good one. Like, if you need to say no, or no, I don't want that, or yes, I want this today. Just go in the other room. I've had someone say that. They just went in the other room, took a break, and went, oh. Then they were able to say, I need a raise. <laughs> so anyway, archetypes are a really powerful part. They're fun. OK, so from line, which is rooted to the adrenals, that way, connected. Then there's, here's our diagram, my thoracic diagram on the pancreas underneath it. And from that, it's it illness, it's a threshold, the space between. So from our 
energetic, you almost feel it, like the energy flow through us, and then that root of the existence, I exist, and I'm in relationship. I'm part of a greater whole, I exist. I'm in, I'm in a community, I'm in a world, interacting, relationship. When we pause like a threshold, it's almost like we could do the here I am sequence again. Here I am, let's just go whoosh, and then we come up to heart, spiral. And that's so literal. The heart is made from the embryology, it spirals around itself to be its shape and, and all the connections, arteries, it's hung from your head, your feet, your fingertips. The fluid spirals through the arteries, squishes back from the veins. Spirals of life, spirals, clunk shells and galaxies. How does spiral, take a moment with spiral and what's it mean to you? And the perspective that you might find your own, you might have just had one come to you. So that's more important than this is the one I say. This one is about embracing, absorbing, and releasing. And just like our heart version, absorbing the oxygen, arteries taking the oxygen, and then releasing. Absorbing, releasing, what can I? You can do all of these perspectives or patterns like a question. I think that's what saved my life. I would do them and just like as a check into myself, what do I need to take in and gather to me? And what can I get rid of? <laughs> what can I release? Each one can be a question. From, from heart, from, this is rooted in the heart bodies and the heart. You move up to the thymus, front and back. And this is sphere. Sphere. Teardrop to the earth, to Jupiter. The shape that gravity makes, spheres. I love I, it's, I love this archetype and this one this is Gaia. I'm back to I'm the earth. So the perspective in sphere, and you can play with little spheres, you can make spheres, you can walk in a circle, play with spheres as I might. There's the perspective here is, is inclusive awareness. Often when we're in pain or in stress, we're so designed to be awake to the interferences because we need to address it. But it can end up being like a focus as if the whole world is negative or the whole world is pain. So if, if my shoulder hurts, it feels like my shoulder hurts and that all is existing. If I can expand and know, well, my nose doesn't hurt. The soles of my feet don't hurt. And, oh, I can move. If I can expand to include the bigger picture, at least... My dog isn't hurting. <laughs> so seeing, it's like, what more can I include? But at the moment I feel like this, and I, if I can catch that grip and that gathering, I can go, and this is true, this piece of paper I have to write, and there's ground underneath my feet, and I'm breathing, and I'm loved. Inclusive awareness, a powerful tool. And when I can't find anything more to conclude, I can bring Gaia on and say, Gaia, what do you see? And then from sphere, we go to throat, thyroid. Again, the vibration connects all these. It's just a sense of a orienting, oh, my voice. Ooh, and this one is wave. Wave, feel the wave in you. You can move internally in like the inner spaces. You can move in the near spaces right around you. 
Keep strength into the cosmos. And again, like wave, if wave was a metaphor for a perspective, what could wave teach you if you let the world show you not some book or expert, not nobody else, you then what's wave about for me? Just gonna let wave be my teacher. See what you came up with, and there's no right or wrong. That's like what your lesson of the day could be. So how these emerged. But for me, wave has to do with sort of change, the crests and the troughs of life. Often our suffering comes because we get stuck with it's good, we want everything to stay good. Versus this is beautiful, I'm gonna savor it. Because there's shift and change. And when it really, really sucks, okay, I can just meet with that and I can cope, I can probably survive this. And I know another crest is possible. But even if I haven't experienced that, this will give us the idea that it can be possible. Rivers shift and change, floods go, waves of light, waves of sound, waves in the world, electromagnetic waves, keeping them away. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, wave. Ah, and then from wave, we come up between the ears, behind the eyes, the nose, the, so there are three glands in the head, and they kind of dance together. Maybe this will unfold into more clarity over time. But the pineal gland is kind of up in here, and it's the it looks like a little pine cone, and it's often been considered the third eye. Up and over, up and up. So this pattern is suspension. So it's like you swing, or you have a pinch on, you swing, and in that moment, right at the top, it's like a moment of suspension before you return. And in this moment, it's like for a moment it's been and only thing is possible. And if I connect that kind of with that center of my head, the perspective in this one is about mystery and insight, those moments when you've let go, you're in the swing, and all of a sudden the poem, you are right, writes itself. The music that makes itself, the dance does itself. It's like, all of that other than consciousness of you, the 95% of you, and the aspects that don't seem to come around in consciousness bubble up. Or perhaps it's the mystery of the universe. I have no idea how things work, but it's like a connection to the great web of life and the web within you. Mystery, possibility that I've never even more, more is possible than I ever even could imagine. It's like beyond my imagination. Like my imagination is one palette of colors, but perhaps there's something that's even beyond that. And then the last pattern, it's as if we went into one of those suspensions and it just, we just stayed there, dissipating, dissipating. So it's in that pituitary mammillary glands, we come back to life force, vibration, the space between the atoms of the quarks and the particles, to dissipate. Vibration again after having lived, like the atom that came from a supernova that's inside me now, returns back to some other form. Here I am as I am, having danced the matter patterns in the world as it is. How rich is it? Lightning bolts and conch shells and teardrops. 
supported by the planet of the planet in the flow of time awaits. So the meta patterns, I hope you get a flavor of what they are and they, I, um, they are used in, in the homeless in motion work as uh, the, in, in the, for example, in the homeless in 12 class as the lens each week has, is a different, in the middle 10 is a different meta pattern that's a lens we look at our subject matter. So. For example, in winter we'll be doing, of 2021, we'll be doing embryology and evolution inside ourselves, like the universe and the history within us. So layers might take on a whole other meaning as we look at the layers of the, where the fossils are found in the layers, or spirals, how different fish moved in water and created different tissues that are now inside of us. So each, each, it's kind of an organizing tool, um, the shape itself, the meta pattern itself. Um, and I use it with any kind of lecture I'm giving or seminar or anything. It becomes, have I looked at the bigger picture? Do Am I taking care of the sort of feeling in the room, the vibe, the, the life force in the room? Am I letting, I really need the spiral. What, I'm so attached to this idea. Can I let that go and just stick with what's important? What can I let go? What do I need to include? Um, am I allowing for change? If somebody gives a certain suggestion, am I free to shift with what's appropriate? And then can I let it go back out into the world and let them discover what it was from what we did together? So I use the meta patterns in a lot of ways and I. Um, and so, thank you for joining, and I hope that this can be useful to you. And come do them with us, because the power is in is in seeing them in so many ways. Thank you.